Our district has now purchased Edpuzzle for us to use. And so what you're going to do the first time is you need to go to edpuzzle.com and you're going to choose log in. You're going to say that you are a teacher and then you're going to sign in with Google down at the bottom. It will ask for your authentication. You might need to type in your username and your password. Um, I already have an Edpuzzle account and I've had one for years. Um, so you see a bunch of things in my content. But what you'll notice is that on the home page, it will give you some information. The first time, if you've never used Edpuzzle before, it might ask for your subject area or things like that. And you can see that it has a bunch of science items on my screen because I teach science. And so, for example, when I look at, um, when I click on my name, so I clicked on my picture on the top right and then click on my name, in the settings section, sorry, in the school section, um, it asks what school you're at, but then it has um, an area for your subject area. And so you can choose what um, subject you teach, and then it will show up on your home page, just kind of like what's new in science in Edpuzzle. For the LMS LTI integration, you do not need to worry about that. Our district has set that up in Canvas for us. So what you're going to do is when you are in Edpuzzle, you can actually search for videos or use other teachers' videos that you um, might be teaching a particular topic. So I might go to Edpuzzle, and I like to look in Edpuzzles first because these are videos that teachers have already found through a lot of different sources or maybe uploaded on their own. And then they added in questions. Now you can see this video rhyming for kids does not have anything next to the time. It's four minutes and 30 seconds of a video. This one, um, it has, it's a two minute video, but see how it has three with that little um, symbol? That contains three questions or notes. So the ones that have this mark next to it have questions added to it. And so you can use one of these videos and delete or edit the questions or add your own, or you can find one that has no questions. Um, so I like to look at the ones that have questions first. So I might choose this equilibrium crash course one if I was teaching chemistry. So what I can do is if I click on the little box next to it, I can choose copy and it's gonna make a copy of it into my account but I want to edit it. So I'm going to click on edit. And here I have the option to cut out sections of the video. So if there's a part of the video I don't want, I can go through and move the little um, bar. So I can move these little bars over to what I want to be cut out of a video, things like that. I can also add a voiceover. So if I want to narrate over, so I'm going to replace existing audio, and I can narrate over certain sections, maybe if they didn't explain things in a way that I liked. I could also choose questions, and you could add multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, or a note. The multiple choice ones are auto-graded. The open-ended, you will have to grade. And the note is just information for students. So I can look at the questions that have been added here already by this teacher. So this is a multiple choice question. So what is another word for balance? And you can see equilibrium is the answer. If I want to edit this question, I'm going to click on the pencil down at the bottom. And I could add in another answer choice if I want and press save. Sometimes what I like to do is I might have two questions in the same spot. And so students will watch a video and they'll see not just one question, but after they answer that question, if they scroll down, they can see a second video. And so down here at the, or sorry, not a second video, a second question. So I can add another note or question here. So I'm gonna choose just a note for this case. So in the note one, I can type notes for students or I can click the microphone and I can record audio and talk to my students by clicking down here. 
but notice that you could add pictures, you could add formulas, you could even add hyperlinks. So sometimes I'll put information to my students like, here's more information about this topic, and I might link to something else. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to add anything. But let's say I didn't want to use this question at all. I could delete it, and it will be gone. So I can go through and edit this video. When I'm done, I'm going to say finish. And I can preview it. I can kind of see where all the questions are. And that is pretty much all that you need to do at this point. It has a sign. Because we are integrating ours in Canvas, we do not assign it from Edpuzzle. This would be if we were using Google Classroom or if we were like getting a link to send to the kids. But with our Canvas integration, this is all we need to do at this point. I will show you how to assign in a separate video that will be linked to this one. But let's say that you had your own video. Let's say you created your own screencast of you giving a short, like, five-minute lecture. Um, remember that when you're doing lectures for online students, it is really easy to go fast in a online lecture when you're recording yourself because you don't have students stopping you and asking for clarification, asking questions. And so what you might do in a 20-minute time in your classroom might only really be 10 minutes of actual lecture. So less is more. For high school students, I would not go longer than 10 minutes in your videos. Try and aim for five, but no longer than 10 minutes. But if you created your own screencast using a tool like Loom, which is free for students and teachers with their pro account, you can create your screencast and you can download your screencast to your computer. Then if I go over to content, this is where you can find different ones to create your own videos. What I want to do is I want to go to my content on the left hand side of my screen. In my content, I have the option on the right, the blue button that says add content. And I can create a video, I could upload a video, I can, um, there's a whole feature with student projects um, that's I'm not going to talk about, but you could also create folders. Now you could upload your video directly here. I actually do not ever upload my video directly to Edpuzzle. The reason for that is I want my videos to have closed captioning so that students who are hard of hearing or um, students like EL students, it really helps them to have captions available as they're watching the video. YouTube puts automatic captions using our artificial intelligence AI. They're not always perfect. You can go in and edit them. Um, but I find that they're really good, good enough um, for the purpose. And so what I always do if I make my own screencast, I upload my video to YouTube first. Then I get the YouTube link. And when I want to put it into Edpuzzle, I go over to the YouTube link on the left hand side of my screen. And then I t um, just paste in the link to my YouTube video. Then I get to the screen that you saw earlier where you could add questions, you can clip things, you can um, add notes, etc., or even add voiceovers if you need to fix something. So um, that is the best way when you create your own screencast, put them in YouTube first to get closed captioning. The next step is to go to Canvas and add an assignment and I have a separate video that shows you how to take your Edpuzzle video that you created or that you edited or found and assign it to a Canvas assignment.